I, I loved the music. None of my friends were really into it. It had never heard of any jazz musicians. Mm -hmm. Maybe people knew Louis Armstrong's name, but certainly had never heard any of his music. We're very much the kind of Marvin Gaye, Stevie Wonder, James Brown kind of generation of, of Afro-American Southern mm -hmm. people. No consciousness really about the music or, or, or culture in general. It wasn't immediate. And uh, I was attracted to it. So people said, what was it like? We were having a hard time. So yeah. we had like the, the type of dysfunction that you have when your family is struggling. We had love, we knew our parents loved us, but we struggled too also. It wasn't a perfect uh, right. situation. And my father was very philosophical in a, in a kind of down home funny way. But uh, I always say when I left home, I, I grew up with my father, I was always with him and I left home at 17 and it was kind of contentious yep. between me and my mother fought a lot. And it was that time I needed to leave, right? It was just So my father gave me a book and it was Autobiography of a Yogi. Paramahansa Yogananda. Uh -huh. So when I saw it was a thick book, I started to laugh. I said, I'm with this guy, I live with him, hung with him. <laughs> I'm 17, and never a single word about Yogananda, ever. Now I'm leaving, he gives me this book about Yogananda, and it was a, a well-worn book. <laughs> and that's how he was. You know, and in that book was more of his, his philosophical, he, he was a universal mm -hmm. humanist. So even in the 1970s, which in America, was the time after the civil rights yep. movement of a great deal of tribalism. Yep. My father was always against that. I was always for it, and he was always against it. So he would, I, I learned a lot just watching him negotiate his space. You grew up in a time when segregation yes. was obscene. Yes. Um, there were places for white people, yes. places for black people. Yes. Um, I'm asking a very personal question, yes. not the musician, mm -hmm. not the famous person. Mm -hmm. I'm asking you, yeah. as an individual. Sure. Um, do you feel any, how shall I call it, deep need to be vindictive under any form, under, in any possible form? Vindictive against who? Let me think. Vindictive against me, for example, as a white person. You're not a white, you, you're Romanian. You, you don't have anything to do with that. Vindictive towards a white American. Okay. Man, when, I, when, I, when, when Martin Luther King died, I had to go to white school. Okay, several things happened. First, I was always the smartest in my class. First. So my feeling about it was, we didn't think that because we lived in a certain type of world. I said, man, okay, I'm the smartest mm -hmm. in the class. But I also didn't like people talking to me a certain way, treating me a certain way. So I said, okay, every time you address me with a certain word, one of us is going to get our ass whipped. And you know, it wasn't a movie. So many times <laughs> I had to receive what was there. And it was not free. Okay. Man, maybe two years into that, the biggest guy in the class was a German. But most of the kids were Italian. Mm -hmm. He said, man, you going to fight everybody? I said, if they call me what I don't want to be called, yeah. He said, the next time they do that, I'm going to jump in. I, then I thought, damn, I got to fight you too? <laughs> I'm not. That was fighting literally. Fight, yeah. I mean, that's what we did. I said, damn, I got to fight you? And I mean, when I say fighting, you was getting, it wasn't like fighting for, for fun. Oh, yeah? Okay, you was going oh, on yeah. looking different. I said, I got to fight you too, man. I'm going to handle this big guy. And he said, no, no, I'm going to fight with you. Damn, the next time. On your side. The next time, damn, if he didn't jump in with me. Now, how do I feel toward him? Wow. He's white. Yeah, my, but he's my, German. Well, okay. My trumpet, teacher, my trumpet teacher in high school was white. How do I feel about him? How do I feel about him? The history of the world is full of people who take advantage when they can take advantage. And That's they're victimized right. when they can't take advantage. I'm too old to mm. spend my life thinking about, you know, I got to get back at white folks. And, and you know, you had a hard time when I was growing up in every, every place you stood. You had a hard time in your family. You had a hard time in your black neighborhood. Yeah. You had a hard time. When you met white folks, they was getting what was left. And all the stuff the world entertains themselves with now that they find funny, gangster this and that, who they killing and shooting. Who are they killing and shooting? Who are they robbing? They're in their own neighborhood. You don't think those people are having a hard time with that? Everybody thinks it's entertainment and fun. If you're in that neighborhood, it's not fun. It's not fun for you. 
And now it's celebrated. So, you know, I'm from the, from the, from the, the neighborhood, man, from the community. You understand what I'm saying? So it, it, it wasn't like you, you was having a picnic. Mm -hmm. But okay, a, a lot of people don't have picnics all in the world. Our pathology is not any worse than a lot of, a lot is made of it. A lot of money is made off of it. But a lot of that is just absolute bull.